Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Superposition. Today we are doing Young's Double Slit Experiment. In the Young's Double Slit Experiment, chromatic light of wavelength 640 nanometers is incident on a pair of narrow slits. A screen is placed 2.5 meters from the double slits and the separation of the fringes on the screen is 3.2 uh, millimeters. So calculate the separation of the double slits. So over here we have the two double slits which have a separation A or D depending on which um, equation you use and over here the distance to the screen is 2.5 meters and the separation between the zero uh, order and the next first order X is equal to 3.2 uh, millimeters. So uh, using this uh, data the easiest one to use will be dx over d is equals to lambda or the uh, what happens is that the uh, notes gives us the equation x is equals to lambda big d over a both of these are the same equation uh, it's just that one of them is easier to understand a new light source is used and the fringe separation on a screen is now 2.8 millimeters now 2.8 millimeters means that the x has decreased now if the x has decreased, it means the wavelength has also decreased because the wavelength and the uh, fringe separation is actually proportional to each other uh, using this uh, approximation. So the wavelength now is 560 nanometers. Now some very important thing for you to remember is the color of the wavelength. Okay, now it's easy to remember because red is 650, green is 550, and blue is 450 nanometers. Now this wavelength uh, must be memorized, okay? So I would like you to memorize uh, these wavelengths. It's required for A-levels. Now next, let's take a look at question 7. The figure shows the top view of the arrangement for obtaining interference fringes in a Young's double slit experiment. A monochromatic orange bulb. An orange bulb is in between red and yellow, so I can estimate the color to be around 600 nanometers. And the six single slit S is located midway between the two slits. On the axis above, sketch a graph to show how fringe intensity varies with distance from O. Now this fringe intensity is actually a combination of two different in uh, intensity and uh, distance uh, graphs right so now this is the single slit uh, uh, sorry this is the single slit diffraction envelope all right and so uh, I'm going to show you how to draw a single slit diffraction envelope over here now the single slit diffraction envelope has a central maxima that's given uh, by a distance 2x and subsequently there are other maximas at distance x respectively. So this is how um, to draw a graph of the single slit. Now listen, there needs to be a minimum of five humps uh, required. Alright, so the, there needs to be a minimum of five humps, okay, five maxima uh, drawn. The first maxima will, the, the subsequent maxima must have an intensity that is less than the one third of the intensity of the uh, first mid, first uh, central maxima all right so next the subsequent maxima over here intensity must be less than one third of i naught and also the intensities must decrease uh, as the maxima uh, gets larger the, the order of the maxima gets larger so i decreases uh, all right with each maxima and also the distances okay the distance uh, the maxima size, the central maxima uh, is size at 2x compared to the others. So this will be a single slit. Now let's take a look at the pure double slit. Over here this is a double slit. The double slit with, uh, with, with uh, zero width uh, slits. Now a double slit with zero width slits, okay, will have an idealized uh, if, uh, interference pattern that looks like this, a constant uh, maxima, right? And the subsequently, each order of maxima has the same uh, separation, has the same fringe separation, all right? So this is uh, n equals to zero, this n equals to one, 
n equals to 2 and so on and so forth. The x now refers not to the minima position but to the separation between the maximas. Right, so it's x, 2x, uh, minus x, uh, and minus 2x respectively. So this is the ideal case. This is the ideal case. Now, so what happens in the real world is that these two will combine. So in the real case, this is a combination uh, of both uh, the single slit and the double slit uh, maximus. Now, so um, the single slit will be overlaid onto the double slit pattern. All right. So what we'll have is that there will be a single slit pattern that is overlapping the double slit pattern. Okay, so this is your single slit pattern over here, and then it will overlap the double slit pattern. The double slit pattern will be inside here. It's n equals to 0, n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3 is missing, then n equals to 4, n equals to 5 is missing, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is uh, on the other side, it will be repeated over here. Okay, 1. 2, 3 is missing, 4 is missing, and so on and so forth. I've not drawn it very well. Okay, so uh, in general, this is what it looks like. n equals to 0, 1, 2, n equals to 1, n equals to 2. Now, over here, this is your XD, your double slit uh, spacing, okay? So this is your double slit fringe spacing. But what about here? This is your, okay, XB. This is your single slit, uh, slit width. Over here, this sorry, this is your single slit first minima. All right, so this over here, this is the first maxima of the double slit, and over here, this is your first minima of the single slit. All right, so this is how it will look like now. So, this is a combination of both the single slit and the double slit interference patterns. So this is again uh, how you would draw it. Okay, over here you can see that this uh, dotted line represents the single slit uh, diffraction envelope. Okay, so I'm going to write down here. This is the single slit diffraction envelope. I'll type it because my handwriting is really bad. And uh, the the straight line, the solid line, will be your double slit interference pattern. Okay, so that's how you sketch it. Now describe what will happen to the interference pattern if, if the arrangement is altered in the following ways. Okay, if slit separation A is half, then the fringe separation will double. So let's take a look at what will happen in the, in the case when the fringe separation is half. Now, what will happen is that the double slit will be affected. Okay, the double slit will be affected. So what will happen is if you half if you half the uh, fringe separation uh, sorry if you half the split separation then the fringe separation will be doubled so let me show you what happens okay so because um, the formula is given as x is equal to lambda big D over a so if a becomes half a, then x becomes 2x. So what will happen is that um, your x here will double. Okay, your x here will double. So over here, your x here will also double. Okay, so now this is your double slit pattern. All right, it's been doubled. So over here, what will happen is that your double slit will also double. So instead of n equals to 1, uh, you know, I, I can't really draw this properly, but maybe it could look like this. All right, so what will happen is that inside the envelope, the double slit pattern will spread out. But however, the envelope remains the same. Okay, so the fringe separation doubles, or rather what we say is the fringe separation of the double slit interference pattern will double. However, the single slit diffraction envelope is unchanged. Okay, so the fringe separation of the double slit uh, pattern will double. However, the single slit diffraction envelope uh, will 
un will be unchanged. Next, what happens if the distance from slits to screen is doubled? So in this case, that will affect both the single slit and the uh, double slit uh, diffraction envelope. Why, why is that the case? So let's take a look at the single slit. This is a single slit. Now it's going to send out uh, a maximum that is this large. Okay, a maximum that is this, this large. Now let's say the distance to the screen is 2 meters. Now if we put a screen closer than 2 meters is 1 meter, then the size of the central maxima will shrink accordingly. Now if we increase the distance to 3 meters, then the size of the central maxima will be this large. Okay, so what, is it, what does it mean? It means that the size of the central maxima in terms of the linear length of the central maxima will depend on the distance to the screen. Also, when it's closer to the screen, it will be brighter. And when it's further from the screen, it will be dimmer. This is because the intensity is equal to the power of the source divided by the area of the light. And so as you go further from the screen, uh, clearly the area becomes larger. All right, and so the intensity will fall. Now, what about a double slit pattern? So this is a double slit pattern uh, over here. You can see the double slit pattern uh, over here. All right, so on the screen. Now, the double slit pattern, the maximas all lie along these lines. Yeah, the maximums lie along these lines. So if you were to uh, put the screen further away, then the separation between the maximums will increase. Over here, this is the, the separation of the maximums will increase. This is x1 and this is x2. So with a, with a, when the screen is further away, the fringe separation will also increase. It's the same for the uh, single slit uh, diffraction envelope as well. Okay, it's just that I haven't drawn it very well over here. Okay, so when the distance from the screen is doubled, the fringe separation is doubled, okay, for both the single slit and the double slit interference patterns. Okay, the intensity of the bright fringes will decrease while intensity of dark fringes remain unchanged. Why is that the case? Because the intensity of the dark fringes uh, is already zero. So when the dark fringes are already zero, you won't be able to decrease them any lower than zero. Now, next, what happens when the monochromatic orange light is changed to a monochromatic blue light? Now, remember, I did ask you to memorize the uh, wavelengths of orange light and blue light. Okay, so blue light is roughly around 450 nanometers, and a uh, red. Uh, orange is in between like red and green, a bit closer to red, so it's probably around 600 nanometers. So what happens is that uh, as the wavelength decreases, then the fringe separation uh, of both the single slit and double slit diffraction envelope will decrease. Why is that the case? Because for the double slit uh, diffraction, uh, the double slit interference pattern is given by the equation d sine theta n equals to n lambda. So as theta decreases, that theta, theta n also decreases. Now the same is for the single slit diffraction envelope. All right. So the, the, the first maximal location of the single slit diffraction envelope is given by b sine theta equals to lambda. So as lambda decreases, theta also decreases. Next, the top end of the screen is tilted to the right slightly while pivoted at O position O is fixed. Now let me just draw out what happens when the screen is tilted. Okay, so currently this is the diffraction pattern that we are seeing over here. Um, there will be a single bright spot and then after that dim spots uh, over here. Now let me move this closer to, the, uh, to the, the slits. So the central maxima will always happen along this line. The first order maxima will be here, second order maxima will be here, okay, first order maxima will be here and second order maxima will be here. Now the central point is O. So what happens if we tilt the screen towards the, the top part tilts towards the uh, slits while the bottom part tilts away? So what will happen is that this will be the new pattern on the screen. So let me just erase all of it so you can see. As you can see, um, the ones that are closer to the screen will, will have a smaller fringe separation, but the uh, maxima that are further away from the screen will have a larger fringe separation. 
not only that but these are going to be brighter as well and these are going to be dimmer all right so let me just uh, redraw the lines again and show you okay so the central maxima is going to occur along this line the first maxima is going to occur along this line the second maxima is going to occur along this line first order maxima and second order maxima so however you tilt the screen this is where the maximas are going to show up so the top end of the screen is tilted to the right slightly or pivoted at oh oh my gosh i've just drawn this a uh, completely wrong way because uh, the 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 screen is supposed to be tilted to the right okay so what's going to happen is that um um you know i just did the previous one just to show you what it was like yeah yeah okay so anyway this is what the pattern is going to look like now all right let me just erase all the rest that are not useful so now if i tilt the screen to the right then uh those uh maxima that are above o will be spread out and those maxima that are below o will be crammed closer together but not only that the fringes uh, fringes above o uh, will be dimmer and the fringes that are below o will be brighter so there's always two things to think about whenever you explain how the maxima or minima change is about the fringe separation about intensity as well now next the power supplied to the bulb is reduced the fringe separation remains unchanged the intensity of the bright fringes will decrease while intensity of dark fringes remain unchanged okay so this is uh quite uneasily understood so i won't go too deeply into that okay now let's talk about what happens when the single slit s is removed now when the single slit is removed the bulb is no longer a point source the two slits are no longer coherent sources of waves and the slit screen will be illuminated from light by the two slits with no fringes observed just a reminder one of the requirements for uh, observable interference is that your sources are coherent now to be coherent means that you must have constant phase difference between the two sources which means that they have the same frequency and wavelength uh, if you use a bulb now the bulb is an extended source the bulb is an extended light source so because it's an extended light source it is not uh, spatially coherent um, so the reason is because the different parts of the bulb are giving off a uh, different uh, light at different phases right so the the each bulb each point of the bulb will have a different uh, phase difference so uh, l1 l2 and l3 they will all be at different phase be at different phase now so what happens is that we need to prevent this from happening uh, so we need to cut off the light using a, um, sing a very small point source so that only, uh, L uh, a s only light from a single uh, point can emerge from the bulb so now with L2 coming out L2 is now uh, spatially coherent All right. Now we also need a wavelength filter to filter out only one color um, but why don't they have this inside the question the reason is because the question already states that um, there is a monochromatic orange bulb so the monochromatic orange bulb is already a single wavelength okay so they don't need to have a wavelength filter to filter out all the other wavelengths now so when the single slit is removed uh, the bulb is no longer a point source so the will not no longer produce coherent light for the interference now let's take a look at what happens when the double slits are shifted uh, slightly upwards um, so what will happen is that the the we only need to consider what happens from here on all right so uh, what happens is that prior to shifting upwards the the path length from here to here okay from here to here and from here to here these paths are all equal so we call this uh, length one d1 uh, d2 or maybe i'll use a capital d d1 d2 d3 and d4 so um you, you see that d1 plus d2 is equals to d3 plus d4 now what happens when we shift the the two slits slightly upwards so let's let's shift them all the way up to here now you can see that d1 and d2 all right will be 
D1 is now longer than D3. So if D1 is longer than D3, then uh, D, D4 must be longer than D2. So now D1 and D2, D3 and D4 are now the same. Okay, so roughly speaking, what will happen is that the original maxima n equals to 0 will shift up to here. Okay, so that will be the new uh, central maxima. So the zeroth order bright fringe is shifted upwards at what point? Oh, actually all fringes, uh, not just the zeroth order. All fringes will be shifted upwards above point O. Okay, that's because the, the bulk will be closer to slip uh, S2. So the, the bulk, you know, the, the, the bottom path will be slightly longer. So the, the beam emitted from S2 must travel over a slightly longer distance to achieve the same zero path difference. And this is the truth for all of the other fringes as well. So every fringe pattern is going to move up to here. Okay. Now next, the polarizing filter is placed in front of each slit. The polarization axis of S1 is perpendicular to that of S2. So here is a slit uh, S1 and here is slit S2. So we're going to put a polarizer over here. One is vertically polarized while the other is horizontally polarized. So the S1 coming out will be vertically polarized and S2 coming out, uh, the light coming out from S2 will be horizontally polarized. Now, what will happen is that when the vertically polarized light meets the horizontally polarized light, they won't be able to cancel out. Let me give you an example. Suppose the light from S1 is coming out vertical and then the light from S2 is coming out horizontal. When they do a superposition, they will not be able to cancel out. In fact, they'll form a new form of a, a new uh, polarization of light which is at 45 degrees to each other. Now so what happens is that there will be no interference patterns observed or fringes observed. This is because the light from each of the slits are polarized perpendicular together hence there cannot be any cancellation of the wave displacements. In order to cancel the wave S1 must be vertical and S2 must also be vertically polarized. Okay, and so that's the end of question 7. Now, if you have any questions about question 7, because I'm going to go through this very quickly, please ask me again in class and I'll explain it to you, uh, but slower. Now, let's take a look at question 8. A laser light, a laser light is both coherent and monochromatic, so it's a uh, coherent light, is used to produce a two-source interference a pattern on a screen. So the two-source interference pattern, you can either use the equation d sine theta n equals to n lambda, or you can use the equation uh, ds over d is equals to uh, n lambda or the equation uh, ax over d is equals to lambda. Now in this case, you take a look at the graph axis, you have x over d. So clearly uh, this means that um, we're going to have x is equals to lambda big T over a as the equation. This will be the gradient of the graph. The gradient will be lambda over a. Okay, so all this analysis can be done uh, within uh, one minute from reading the question. The variation of fringe width, the distance d of the double slit to the screen is shown below. Separation a of the slits is 0.12 mm. Every time you see this, please convert this back into SI uh, base units. Otherwise, there will be a major error with the calculations later. Alright, so you can also see that the x is in millimeters. Uh, so this is a trap. So make sure that you convert that. The d meters is fine. From the wavelength of the laser light, uh, calculate the wavelength lambda of the laser light. Now the gradient is lambda over a. So what we'll do is that we'll take two points over here. This is uh, 1.0 and 4.4. And over here this is 2.0 and 8.8. .8. Okay, so then the gradient of the graph gives lambda over a. So lambda, lambda over a will be equals to the gradient change in the x over change in the distance d. Right, over here, this is the gradient of the graph, change in x over change in d. So lambda is equals to 5.28 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, so you cannot use a coordinate value for the gradient, neither can you use a, a small triangle. So this gradient triangle is too small. Alright, so use a gradient triangle that is as large as possible. Okay, so basically we want to use this gradient triangle. Over here is just nice. Okay, so use uh, as much data as possible to fill your answer.
Now, a filter is used so that the amplitude of light from one slit is half. Calculate the maximum intensity of a central bright fringe over the maximum intensity of the adjacent dark fringe. So over here, this is the intensity uh, A and this is the intensity half A. So when it reaches this point, okay, this intensity here will be A and this intensity here will be half A. This is n equals to 0. So at n equals to 0, the A0 will be equals to A plus half A, which is 3 over 2A. So the intensity of the zeroth order will be the square of 3 over 2, oops, what am I doing? The square of 3 over 2a squared, which will be 9 over 4 i0. Alright, so this will be the 9 over 4. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at what happens at destructive interference. So over here, this is a dark spot where n equals to half. Now the, uh, the amplitude at the dark spot at the n equals to half uh, position will be a minus half a because the amplitudes will subtract. Okay, so that will give us a uh, half A. So the intensity at the dark spot will then be half A squared, which is one quarter of um, I naught. Okay, now, so you can see that the bright uh, spot will have uh, 9 fourth I naught, and then the dark spot will have one quarter I naught. So the ratio would be the maximum intensity of the central bright fringe is 9 over 4, okay, I0, divided by the maximum intensity of the adjacent dark fringe is 1 over 4, I0. This would be 9. Okay, so the key idea is that at the uh, constructive interference, the, what happens is the amplitudes will add. Okay, and uh, at the destructive interference, what happens is that the amplitudes subtract. Okay, so I hope that uh, helps you with double slit interference. Next, we shall go to single slit diffraction. Now, single slit diffraction um, formula will be B sine theta equals to N lambda. However, the B, uh, uh, the, the, the theta, so the B is a slit width. The theta is the angle of the first minimum. All right, so then there'll be other spots around here as well. So you must be able to identify that this is a single slit pattern just based on the size of the central maxima alone. Okay, so the light of wavelength 578.5 nanometers illuminates a slit width of 0 0.75 millimeters. So B is equal to 0 0.75 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Uh, lambda equals to 587.5 times 10 to the power of minus 9. Calculate the distance of the screen from the slit. The first minimum diffraction pattern is 0.85 mm from the central maximum. So this distance is 0.85 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Now the first thing we need to go do is to find the angle theta. So if we find the angle theta, you can work in degrees or radians, but I prefer to work in radians. Okay. So you can find that theta using the formula to find that theta is 7.83 times 10 to the minus 4 radians. Now there's two ways to do this question after that. The first way to do the question is by using trigonometry. So over here, this is 0 0.85 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So this means that tangent theta in radians is equal to 0 0.85 times 10 to the minus 3 over d. So you fill in the value of theta and you find d. Okay. Now the second way of doing this is by using the circular measures um, formula S D and theta, this is r, sorry, r. So, okay, so um, theta is approximately equals to s over r because s is approximately equals to r theta. Okay, from this is from circular measures, circular sector, all right, arc of a circular sector. So there's two ways of doing this. How come? Because when theta is small, then uh, Theta is, proportion, uh, is approximately equals to tangent theta in radians. Okay, so this is a small angle approximation. You can do the question using both methods. Okay, so uh, either case, um, tangent theta will be 0 0.85 times 10 to the minus 3 over d, and d is 1.1 meters. So that means the distance to the screen will be 1.1 meters. Okay, let's go on to question 10. A double slit consists of two single slits, each of width 1 mm. 
0.1 mm. So this is now B is equals to 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3. Please uh, don't get the variables wrong. The separation of the states is 1.4 mm. That means D is equals to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. We already know from here that the missing uh, maxima, okay, the missing maxima will be the 14th maxima is the missing maxima based on the ratio between the two uh, of these values, okay. But in any case, uh, that's something that uh, you should be able to remember, uh, you know, just by looking at the uh, data. So parallel wave light. A length of a uh, wavelength of 590 millimeters. I think this is orange light. Okay, uh, 10 to the minus 9 meters. It's incident normally on double slit. A screen is placed at a distance d is 2.6 uh, meters from the slits, as shown below. Initially, one of the two slits is covered. Calculate the width of the single slit diffraction pattern. So this they're asking us for x b. All right, what is x b? X b is the width of the single slit diffraction pattern this is theta b and this is x b okay this x b and this is d okay so the formula uh, to be used is b sine theta is equals to lambda all right so from here we can find out the uh whoops the work is being done on the next page okay so we find out that theta is 0 0.338 you can work in degrees or radians is fine or radians is okay although my preferred method is in radians but that's really up to you okay so this distance here will be xb all right the width of this the side width of the single slit uh, uh central maxima okay so the width of central maximum uh xb will be equals xb over 2.6 will be equals to tangent of theta b all right so that that will give us the value uh, xb Will be equals to 0 0.01534 meters now however that's not what the question asks the question is asking for the width of the central maxima that means 2xb they want to know the actual size from one end to the other so 2xb will be equals to 0, 0.0 um 3 0, 7 meters which is equals to 3.07 times 10 to the power of minus 2 meters i must have got something uh, wrong over here so let me just double check oh, what do you know uh the answer here is the same because uh that's 30.7 and that is 3.07 so this answer is correct all right now both states are now uncovered so estimate the number of fringes uh, that are resulting from the double slit interference that are seen within the central maximum produced by the single slit diffraction. So let the fringe separation be x, okay? x is equals to 0 0.001507. So now they are saying that this is the single slit diffraction pattern, but when both slits are uncovered, all right, then there will be a double slit pattern within the single slit pattern. All right, and they are asking what is the number of fringes resulting from double slit interference that are seen within the central maximum produced by single slit diffraction. So one of the ways to do this is to estimate what is the fringe separation. Now the fringe separation um, is 0 0.0010957 meters, okay, calculated this way. So the number of fringes that can be put within this uh, over here is 28. However, I don't think this is the correct answer because what it just means is that this, uh, this over here can accommodate 28 gaps. 28 gaps. So I suppose uh, if there are 28 gaps, then there are 29 fringes. So the number of fringes uh, will be equals to 29. I think that this should be the correct answer. Okay, and this brings us to the end of the, both the double and the single slit interference patterns. Once again, I'm going through this very quickly. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know and then I'll try to explain to you in class. Thank you and have a wonderful uh, holiday.